This afternoon, the Secretary General and Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum, will, sign a, will witness the signing of a memorandum of understanding on a strategic partnership between the UN and the World Economic Forum, which outlines areas of cooperation to deepen engagement between the two institutions and to jointly accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. Yep, you heard it there. The World Economic Forum and the United Nations will now be working together to accelerate the integration of the Great Reset. So in this video, we'll be talking about exactly what that means and also how a partnership between the World Economic Forum and the United Nations will drastically change and alter the timeline and the gravity of the Great Reset. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first started learning about what the Great Reset was and started making content on this topic, I didn't really see the World Economic Forum as a strong entity. In fact, over the years, I've learned that it actually has very little power. I mean, by definition, the purpose of the World Economic Forum is to bring together its membership of political and business leaders each year to discuss major issues that impact the global economy. And judging by that definition, I just saw it as a big kumbaya session for global elites talking about how much better than they are than all of us. You know, the people that pay for their salaries and feelings of self-importance. At the end of the day, it seems that the extent of the World Economic Forum's reach is just mere influence. The United Nations, however, well, that's a different story. Because like many of you, I've known about the United Nations almost my whole life. In fact, it's probably one of the first things they teach you in school during social studies class. Now at the core, the United Nations purpose, according to their website at least, is to promote and preserve world peace. However, upon further investigation and research, I learned that the United Nations can actually go as far as passing legitimate international legislation and can go as far as even giving out financial sanctions without any limitations on jurisdictions. Now, of course, all of this, and even more, I might add, can all be done under the context of emergency powers. Hmm, I wonder who else loves to expand their reach and control through the context of emergency powers. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, this just reminds me so much of Star Wars when like Jar Jar Binks is telling everybody that the Darth Sidious needs all this power because of emergency situations. But regardless of whether or not you see Klaus Schwab as a Sith Lord, it seems the purpose of the World Economic Forum partnering with the United Nations is for the UN to really be the hands and feet of the Great Reset. In fact, in the official partnership framework between the WEF and the UN, which by the way is on the WEF website, it outlines a total of six major focal points for this partnership, of which the very first and foremost important is the financing of the 2030 Agenda. Which means aligning more of our world's financial systems to be along the lines of the wants and the desires of the Great Reset and the global elites. Now the other five focal points include climate change, health, gender equality, and the empowerment of women, education slash skills, and digital cooperation. So this was the point in my research where I asked myself, what the heck is digital cooperation? And upon further research, I learned that digital cooperation is what the World Economic Forum refers to as the fourth industrial revolution. Which, for those of you that may not know, according to an article written and published by the World Economic Forum, the fourth industrial revolution is a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. Now, in this same article, it outlines how the fourth industrial revolution will help shape the world on how it's going to impact businesses and how it's going to change the world, etc., etc., etc. But where it gets really scary is when it starts talking about the government and us, the people. Because under the section, Impact on Government, it states, simultaneously, governments will gain new technological powers to increase their control over populations based on pervasive surveillance systems and the ability to control digital infrastructure. As in, you will have zero privacy whatsoever and the government will have the technological capabilities to access your financial bank accounts, your most sensitive information, your location, I mean, pretty much everything in your life. Maybe even your bodily functions at one point, which by the way, that's usually between the hours of 10 a.m. and <laughs> Which speaking of privacy, in a later section of the article titled The Impact on People, it states, the fourth industrial revolution finally will change not only what we do, but also who we are. It will affect our identity and all the issues associated with it, our sense of privacy, our notions of ownership, our consumption patterns, the time we devote to work and leisure, and how we develop our careers, cultivate our skills, meet people, and nurture relationships. By the way, I love how when it comes to privacy, the World Economic Forum pretty much states that we, the people, won't need privacy. Why? Because literally the next paragraph over, it states, one of the greatest individual challenges posed by new information technologies is privacy. 
we instinctively understand why it's so essential, yet the tracking and sharing of information about us is crucial part of the new connectivity. Which hey, I guess that's the reason they're going with to pretty much take away all our privacy. And of course, we can't forget what was said earlier, which referred the changes to key terms such as our notions of ownership, as in we will own nothing and supposedly be happy, and our consumption patterns, as in the restrictions towards consuming foods such as meat. By the way, for those that are curious, Klaus Schwab himself was the author of this article that we've been referencing so far that detailed the fourth industrial revolution, which is a massive part of the Agenda 2030. And well, because of the partnership between the UN and the WEF, the 2030 agenda may soon be the 2027 or the 2025 agenda. Now here's something important I haven't mentioned yet, which is the fact that this partnership was actually signed into place back in June of 2019. And since then, there's been a good amount of resistance. But it wasn't until recently that the partnership between the UN and the WEF started aggressively pushing for the 2030 agenda, along with the five other main focal points within their partnership. So of course, the question is, what's the relevance right now? I mean, why didn't they start this aggressive push three years ago when they first signed this agreement? First and foremost, a good reason could be the fact that Elon Musk just recently bought Twitter in the name of protecting free speech in one of the world's largest social media platforms. And maybe they see this as a bigger problem to people finding out about what they're truly trying to do. But honestly, if you ask me, the bigger reason is, well, you. I mean, the amount of people that are aware and see the Great Reset and the World Economic Forum for what it truly is has grown tremendously which is why we love asking people to share our videos because it really does make a difference. Now, to be honest, when we made our first video on The Great Reset about two years ago and I started sharing about what I was learning about it, we honestly had no idea that it would create the community and the audience that we have today. So with that being said, thank you. Thank you for listening, thank you for sharing, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for liking these videos and being on this journey with us because there's definitely way more to be discussed. Because at the end of the day, like you, we're always looking to seek and learn these things that not only impact our world on a day-to-day -day basis, but also learning how to stand up to them. But in going back to the topic of this video, of course, there are more partners to the Agenda 2030 than just the United Nations. Other partners include oil companies such as Saudi Americo, Shell, Chevron, BP, food companies like Unilever, the Coca-Cola company, Nestle, technology companies such as Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple, and big pharmaceutical companies like AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna. Which by the way, just so happens that the three pharmaceutical companies that received the most government funding by far were AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Moderna, the same three companies that partner with the World Economic Forum and Agenda 2030. As a matter of fact, they received nearly $2 billion, and what's crazy is that they're about to receive $10 billion more, all instigated by the Biden administration. So to check out what's happening there, I want you to click on the video on the end screen that you see. Also, if you wanna see how much a company like Pfizer profited off the pandemic, check out this video as well. So with that said, guys, thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel for more content, and of course, share this video because it really does make a difference. So with that said, friends, I'll see you guys in the next one.